Chair, you ready? Yeah. Hi, folks. Noel Hunter here with some more stories called Memories. Hope y'all enjoying them. I got a couple of pretty good ones tonight. Let's see. The first one I want to talk about is when we went to San Diego, the ship had to have some repairs, so we took the ship through the Panama Canal around to San Diego. San Diego, whenever you walked out the front gate, was nothing but bar after bar after bar on both sides of the street for probably a mile. And, uh, I kind of partake a few. I was by myself. Jim had duty at night, so I was by myself. So I was going to go back to the ship early because I didn't want to be out there by myself when it got dark and all. Well, when I was walking towards the gate, these three guys got in behind me. And I think they were Marines, but I'm not for sure. And I hear them talking about me. So I just kept walking, trying to stay ahead of them. And I heard one of them says, when you get to by them warehouses, we'll grab and jerk him in that alley and we'll rob him. Well, I took off running. And the first alley I seen between two of the warehouses, I started running down there. I think I could cut through and maybe get to the ship quicker. Well, I stumbled over a pallet. One of these wooden pallets they had a bunch of them in there, but one of them laying right in the way, and I stumbled over it. And when I was trying to get up, this one guy was ahead of the other two. He come on and run up there with his fist drawn back and took a swing at me, and I ducked. And uh, I reached down and grabbed a board that was laying there. And I just slapped him upside the face of that board. And boy, did he go to screaming. I know I didn't hit him that hard, you know. Well, the other two guys, they come up there, and he he got a hold of the board like that. I thought he was trying to keep me from getting it away from him, and I wanted to have it case the other two. So I just jerked hard, and he, he let it go, and I got the hold of the board. And he got up, and he took off running back out of the alley, and the other two guys followed him. I said, well, darn, you know, I couldn't understand what was going on there. So I happened to look at the board. And the end of the board, there's about five nails. See that board? I'd have buried him in that guy's face. I felt bad about it for a while, but after a while, I said, you know, I don't know what they would have done to me. And I was just protecting myself. But things like that happen. You just got to watch out for them, you know. Let me see. Uh, trying to think of another. Let me get my book here and see if I can remember something. Oh, I know, this, this y'all enjoy this. Uh, we cross the equator. And there's a tradition that when you cross the equator, it's a big celebration. And it started way back years and years, hundreds of years ago, on the sailing ships. You have what you call a polywog, which is somebody that's never crossed the equator before. Then you had a shellback that had crossed the equator before. And you went through an initiation like... You can't believe, okay? You got King Neptune, which happened to be one of the civilians on board that crossed the equator during World War II. So there was nobody even close to him. Our captain hadn't even been across. So he went through an initiation too. There was five of us. There was five uh, shellbacks that were Navy, and there was 10 or 12 that were civilians. Most of us never been across it. And it's something to really be proud of. Ain't many people could say they crossed the equator. Well, start off with, you'd have King Neptune be sitting in a chair all dressed up, the crown and everything on. Then you'd have his wife, and then next to the wife would be the royal baby. Next to the royal baby would be the royal dentist, and then the royal butcher. I mean, the royal barber. Uh, yeah. Whenever you find him with all of them, then you was initiated. Okay, let me tell you the first one. They made a tube out of canvas, about this big around. Took a canvas of soda, made a tube. It was probably 30 foot long. Had a high at each end. And they saved all the garbage for about a week off the ship. And they put powdered onions and everything in a whirl in. I mean, it was something bad. Didn't have no bones or nothing that would hurt you. It was just mashed potatoes and cabbage, anything you can name. Something that wouldn't hurt you, though. But one of the things you had to do, you had to crawl all the way through that son of a gun. And when you get out of the other side... You were throwing up, believe me. A lot, a lot of us throwed up going through it. Well, they made what they call a shillelagh, too. They take a two-inch piece of fire hose, soak in salt water, and let it dry. And as you're going through that tube, they're wearing your butt out. And you're naked now. They're wearing your butt out through that canvas. And even when you get out of it, they start wearing you out. Okay, then you go to the, let's see, you go to the, uh, 
the baby, the royal baby, and he happened to be a cook on the ship. Big old black guy. That, I mean, had a belly like this. And big old hairy belly. Big old boy. He had a five-gallon bucket of nothing but pure, like, lard. He put red food dye coloring in it. He would try to get a handful of just coat his belly like that, and you had to get on your knees and get you by your ears and just rub you all in his belly. You had, you'd have that lard all up your nose, ears, and everywhere. Then when you left there, you had to go to the royal dentist. Now, he had him a concoction made up about everything you could think of. Garlic, powdered onions, powdered eggs, vinegar, hot sauce, a lot of hot sauce. All this was big stuff. He had a great, I mean, a big old syringe. He sucked that full like that. You go up there and get on your knees in front of him, open your mouth and shoot that down your throat. Whew. It was hard to take. I said, it can't get much worse than this. Well, it didn't. You got to go through the raw swimming pool. And that was more or less just kind of clean yourself up a little bit. Especially your hair, because then you're going to the raw barber. Well, the first thing you do, I took them clippers and right down the middle of my head, all the way to the scalp. <laughs> well, <laughs> all you're going to do is go ahead and shave all your hair off. Because we've done that once we got down below. And then after all the initiation, no whip, we had a big barbecue out on the deck and everything. It was, it was something. Now, we had this guy, he was a... He was a Latin American, had real black, real curly hair, and he was really proud of his hair. He had good hair, he did. Well, he wasn't about to get his hair cut, so he went and hit on the ship to keep him going through it. That's not going to happen, because they got a log of everybody, and they're going to search that ship. They find you, you're going to go through it. Well, it took about an hour. We all turned to, because we was all shellbacks. Because everybody done been through it, you see. So it took about an hour to find him. He was hit way up in the storage locker on a bunch of sacks of potatoes. So we drug him up there. Now, we got the Think about that. Even the captain went through it. He went through everything I went through. Even the captain did. Well, the captain, he made sure he got the double dose of everything. <laughs> and his hair was shaved to the bone. <laughs> well, folks, I'm going to take a little break and probably go drink me a cold one. Then I'll come back down here tomorrow night. It's, it's a lot cooler at night. So I think I'm going to do a lot of this at night. And we'll talk at you later. And remember, everybody, if you enjoyed that, click the like button, subscribe, leave comments, and also share these with your friends, thank you. Hold on, it didn't.